Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, last year, I uh, introduced uh, the clarifying law around insurance of marijuana act or the claim act have uh, provide a safe harbor for insurers to provide products and services to businesses that are involved with state legalized cannabis without the risk of federal prosecution. This bipartisan legislation was included as a provision of the Safe Banking Act, which I strongly support. Uh, Commissioner Bahrain, can you please um, describe why we need the Safe Banking Act enacted as soon as possible? Thank you, Senator. Um, as you know, the NAIC does support the Safe Banking Act. Insurance regulators recognize state legalized <laughs> cannabis businesses require access to insurance to mitigate the risks that they face like any other authorized business. The Safe Banking Act would help remove federal barriers for insurers to insure state legalized cannabis businesses. You know, it's really critical that um, businesses be able to buy insurance, that they be able to pay for that insurance, and when claims occur, that insurance companies be able to use the banking system to pay those claims. The Safe Banking Act would allow that to happen. <coughs> Thank you. I I'm concerned that businesses that have nothing to do with cannabis could face serious consequences to the bills enacted. Imagine a scenario where a New Jersey light bulb manufacturer sells a product to a state legalized cannabis business, and there's a fire related to the light bulb causing the business to suffer loss. Uh, under current law in the scenario I just described, could the light bulb manufacturer insurance company face federal charges if they paid the claim? So the challenges that insurance companies have is using the banking system to transfer funds to a uh, cannabis business. So the answer is that that is a circumstance which could be challenging for that light bulb company's insurer in trying to use the banking system to pay money to the cannabis business. Well, the House has passed this bipartisan measure seven times, and I think it's long past for the Senate to do the same. Let me turn uh, to uh, pandemic risk insurance. When COVID-19 first hit our country in 2020, small business owners discovered the most uh, business interruption policies excluded claims from viral contamination, disease, or pandemic, leaving many businesses without relief. Instead, Congress quickly provided on a bipartisan basis trillions of dollars in aid to help keep small businesses afloat and save jobs. I'm proud to have voted for the American Rescue Plan, which was critical to our COVID response. But we should be planning ahead to get uh, to better protect our economy from the risk of a new pandemic that could threaten to overwhelm the health system. In today's interconnected world, the, the question of the next pandemic is not if, but when. Uh, Commissioner Bahrain, is there still uh, is there still limited pandemic business interruption coverage in the market? Yes, I would say that the scope of coverage that's available in the market has certainly not changed. It certainly has not expanded. So wouldn't business owners, employees, and the federal government be better prepared for the next pandemic if Congress established a public-private insurance solution to provide coverage for pandemic-related losses? I think that business um, interruption insurance in a circumstance like this is an area where the risk is potentially so large and so uncertain that it is not going to be covered by the private insurance market. And in those circumstances, the, uh, it's certainly appropriate to discuss what public-private partnerships could do in order to make sure that financing is available in those extraordinary catastrophic circumstances. I appreciate that. It's critical that we plan ahead for the next pandemic rather than wait until the next outbreak of a new deadly virus. And far from incentivizing lockdowns, what we really need is to find a way to incentivize businesses to preserve the lessons of COVID and accept a level of personal responsibility if they're unwilling to do so. Uh, and similarly, uh, I don't know those who would uh, simply wait until a crisis point and have the federal government distribute trillions of dollars instead of working ahead of time to develop a more targeted response uh, to the specific needs of an individual business. That's what I think we should do. Uh, finally, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, last month, uh, FEMA reported that over 425,000 policyholders dropped out of the National Flood 
uh, insurance programs since risk rating 2.0 took effect. That's nearly 10% of the program. Uh, FEMA originally estimated in a pessimistic model that 20% of the policyholders would drop coverage over 10 years. The agency predicted it would take years for 425,000 policyholders to drop coverage, but instead it took eight short months. A majority of homeowners across the country are already uninsured against flooding, and it's clear that risk rating 2.0 is only making the situation worse. I think FEMA has misled us, and I want to work with you, Mr. Chairman, uh, to advance the bipartisan legislation we have before the problem gets even worse. Thanks, Senator Menendez. 